Hello everyone, welcome to another awesome Minecraft update ideas video. This month the topic is combat and wait, didn't Mojang already do this? God, me and Mojang are just in a constant cycle of stealing each other's ideas. It's funny because a lot of my ideas, especially from the river update, are in Minecraft 1.14. But anyway, ignoring the fact that I've had to rewrite the script for this video because of Minecon Earth, let's get into the video! Okay, let's start off easy with a few changes I'd like to make to the game. I won't mention anything from Minecon Earth, whether or not I disagree with it, cough, safety offhand, cough, so we'll start the ideas now. I'll be honest, I was tempted to make a title card, but I'm making this video about three weeks later than I planned to, and I probably should have done title cards back in March if I really wanted them, so we'll just make do with nothing for these last few. Okay, first change, bringing back an old feature for pincushion arrows. Alright, I should probably explain this. Back in the old days of Minecraft, arrows used to randomly stick out of the player, like they do today, but this would carry on for every arrow that hit you, and it was absolutely hilarious and I loved it, so just bring that back, because I think it's honestly really funny. Alright, these aren't strictly changes, but they don't actually add any new items into the game, so I'm going to count them as changes, which means, second change! Sharp items, like flint and arrows, do plus one damage when held in your hand. I just like this as a fun way to do more damage in the early game before you really have many weapons, but also in things like Hunger Games, so even if you don't get a weapon straight away, you can still do some damage to tributes around you. Alright, this next idea is so important that I wrote it down twice in my notes for this update. I really do wish I was joking, I genuinely wrote it down twice without realising until just now writing the script for this. But anyway, creepers properly camouflaging in. This fits in with Jabba redoing the Minecraft textures as a cool feature that Simply Sark, a great YouTuber that you should check out, has already shown can work really well. To quickly summarise, the creeper's texture used to camouflage really well back in the alpha days when grass was neon. You could still make the creepers out, but it was a lot harder, making them a lot more scary. The idea is to alter their textures as they move from biome to biome to reflect the terrain around them. The video that's running on the screen now demonstrates this, but the idea is slightly more beige for sandy biomes like deserts, white for snowy biomes like whatever ice spikes biomes are called. I like to think of them as winter wonderlands. Either way, you get my point. It's awesome and would bring some challenge to Minecraft. Okay, short one here. Skeletons that are burning fire flaming arrows. It makes sense. If a burning zombie hits you, you get set on fire. If a burning skeleton hits you with an arrow, you get set on fire. Simples. On the topic of skeletons and zombies, to add some variety very easily to the game, I'd like it if skeletons sometimes spawn holding nothing, or other random items like zombies do now, and zombies could sometimes spawn holding a bow. This would just make the mob seem more real and less like a random generic spawn in a video game. Next change to make combat better, and general Minecraft life easier, it would be great if right-clicking on armor placed it on the player. Hang on a minute, Will! You're suggesting adding something to the game that's already been added in an update that's already been made! Shut up and let me explain myself. Currently, if you're wearing armor and you right-click on armor of the same type, so two helmets, it won't put it on, even if it's better. That's just dumb and infuriating in PvP. So if we could just make it so whatever you right-click that you're holding gets placed on the correct armor slot no matter what, that'd be great. Even for things like pumpkin heads. Okay, more changes here. Some about fire? Probably should have put this in with the skeletons burning, shouldn't I? Eh, who cares? It would be cool if burning creepers set fire to the blocks around them when they exploded. There's also a concept of them leaving any potion effect they had on them as a lingering potion around them, which seems pretty cool to me, so I think we should have both of those in the game. You know, it's the little things. I know I mentioned it last week, but Depth Strider making you swim faster when you swim up as well as along just help in travel. Okay, my plan here was to talk about shipwrecks, but those are now confirmed to be coming to Minecraft, thanks for giving my ideas, Mojang. Seriously though, that's fine. I wanted them to be added, that's why I talked about them, and now they are, so I have nothing to complain about. If anything, I'm happy. Right, I will still talk about them though, because I have a few ideas. Firstly, I know I love talking about zombie and skeleton variants, but zombie and skeleton pirates that walk on the ocean floor around shipwrecks, carrying cutlasses, I'll get onto those in a minute, and attack players that approach. They could also spawn in deep ocean biomes, which, although not really relevant to this update, I'd love to be huge areas where the light level in water decreases rapidly as you go down, and the ocean floor is low, smooth. You could also have larger shipwrecks in these deep ocean biomes, with better loot, but more powerful zombie pirates in them. They could also be called Drowned Sailors, if you don't want to have zombie or skeleton in the name, like Husks and Strays. Some of these ships could also have zombie pirate spawners in them. Just an idea. Along with zombie pirates, I would like to add a mob called a Red Squid. I know this is quite similar to mob A from the Minecon vote for a mob thing, but I think it would be a cool idea anyway. And I had it first. My idea is that this red squid has a slightly different model to the normal squid, moves quickly in water, a lot faster than squids do at the minute, fights guardians, and attacks the player, maybe doing one heart of damage each attack? It would also have the ability to ink, creating a cloud of black smoke around the player. It wouldn't give the player blindness, but instead have a large black cloud of particles, which I guess could be laggy, but Mojang can optimise it, and players could swim out of it if they wanted to escape the blindness. I just think it's a cool local area. It would be interesting if the red squid only used this ink ability once below half its health. Could be a cool mechanic. Sort of 
inks and swims away when you've got it too low on health, but I do love that they would attack guardians, so you could find them around monuments, but just on the outskirts, because guardians would attack them back, as well as spawning in shipwrecks, and as a much less common random spawn in deep ocean biomes anyway. In deep ocean biomes, they would always spawn in low light levels, but would rise to the surface and travel all over, day or night. I really love this idea, so please make it a thing, Mojang. I'd also love if Guardians spawn in these shipwrecks, but I think that is enough about shipwrecks, because I've talked about them before and I'm spending too long on them. Although, really quickly, with ocean monuments, you could also do a whole cool thing of having, like, uh, taken over ocean monuments, where rather than Guardians, red squid spawn, and maybe you could have, like, a giant squid mob, you know, like a sort of Eld Guardian, a mini boss. That would just be a cool idea. Let's move back to the surface and talk about adding some structures. I think you could definitely have some random shrines made of cobblestone in Minecraft, a bit like Stonehenge, where Endermen would be more likely to spawn. Alternatively, you could make these out of endstone to fit with Enderman idea. Just a small thing you could add to Minecraft. There's plenty of structures you could add. That's why I made a whole video about it. So I don't want to talk about all of them, but I'll mention a few. Abandoned mines. Simply an extension of abandoned mine shafts that reaches up to the surface so that you could find abandoned mine shafts easier. These could also have a zombie variant. The miner zombie. More dungeons! These could have overground entrances sometimes, but would be in a similar style to strongholds, I think. Except not as big, and without the end portal. Just something fun to find around your Minecraft world, and another reason to go exploring. I'd really love to have some more modular dungeons in Minecraft, so that every adventure in them is different. I love the temples, but they are the same every time, which can get kind of boring kind of quickly. Alright, a few more changes here. The first one is simply, much like armor swapping, a little utility change. Could you access your entire inventory from chests and furnaces, etc? Because at the moment, you can't reach your offhand or armor slots while in any block with a GUI, and this is definitely lacking. It would make gearing up for battle super quick and easy, so doing this would be great, thank you! Small change here, already done by Optifine. Could flaming arrows emit light? Just a cool feature to leave a trail or see where you're going in darkness. A fun one to make the night a bit harder and scarier. A howling wolf sound. Very common on the full moon. And on the full moon, all non-tamed wolves become hostile. That sounds great fun. Scary, dangerous, and difficult, but great fun. Or maybe it could only be a few of them, based on local difficulty? To balance out skeletons a little bit, could they move slower when they are drawing their bow, the same way players do? It would make them slightly easier to hit, as at the moment they can be difficult to do damage to when they're firing at you, which can be too infuriating if you ask me. A fun idea that makes getting some of your stuff back harder, again, you could do this based on local difficulty, is a player zombie that sometimes spawns when you die. This zombie wouldn't pick up items and would do less damage to you than a normal zombie, and possibly just be a slightly paler version of the player that died's skin. It wouldn't be tough, easy enough to beat in a few clicks, even without a weapon, but just an extra challenge when you die, a sort of punishment. If you wanted to get really involved with local difficulty, you can make the damage a player zombie does, and its health, correspond to this. Or maybe relate to the amount of times a player dies, so as each death it gets slightly stronger. And I also don't think it should spawn with every death. Maybe a 10% chance of spawn? I'd like it to spawn in peaceful mode, but just not attack the player and eventually despawn. Just a little nod, you know, a nice thing to see when you die. And also mark your death point so you can find it easily. Okay, here we get in some new items. First up, let's talk about two new weapons, both work in similar ways. One is the dagger, and one is the cutlass. A cutlass would be a stick and two of the blade material, but in a diagonal line. It would have a quicker attack speed than the sword, but do a little bit less damage with each hit. A dagger would have little to no cooldown, but would do a lot less damage than the sword, have less durability being crafted with only one blade material, and an interesting mechanic, I think, would be if the dagger had a shorter attack range. The cutlass could have this similarly. You could use them with the benefit of faster attacks, but you would put yourself in more risk. It would definitely change PvP, giving different edges to different weapons and letting people have a more varied playstyle. I want to introduce some new types of armor, and the first is just a normal set of armor, maybe with strength somewhere in between iron and diamond, and that is scale armor. Made with prismarine shards, I think it would be interesting if it had a higher durability than armor, but came with something all the armors I'll be talking about in this update have, which is a natural ability. This would just be passive and act almost like an enchantment. It wouldn't tell you on the item, although maybe finding books or scrolls on the armor and its properties in loot chests could be a fun way of adding lore to the game, which is a planned feature. For scale armor, its natural ability would be to have higher projectile protection, being strong and resistant to things like guardian beams. If you wanted to make it more powerful, you could also make it make you swim faster underwater. So, you know, you'd wear it underwater at ocean monuments and things. Just an idea. The next sets of armor I'd like to talk about are redstone and emerald. I talk about them more in the magical cooking update, so go and watch that for some detail, but basically, you infuse diamond and iron with emerald and redstone respectively, by throwing them in a cauldron with some lapis or obsidian or blaze powder, whichever you prefer, and then you get a redstone or emerald piece of armor back out. Emerald armor has higher durability and slightly more protection than diamond, but you move slower while wearing it. Redstone armor makes you move faster, but has lower durability than iron and slightly worse protection. Back to armor made from mobs. I think it would be cool if you could have some shulk armor, possibly just wearing a shulker shell as a helmet. I like the idea of shulker armor being only a helmet, and possibly boots, so either wear a couple of shulk shells on your feet, or one on your head, crafted in a crafting table just to get shell armor. This armor has the natural ability of extra blast protection, and it might be a cool mechanic to have it negate the levitation effect, because if you didn't already know, shulkers are not affected by levitation. 
I just think some of these ideas will make you change your armor a bit more when you go to different areas of Minecraft, such as, you know, the end, your shell armor, underwater, shipwrecks and ocean monuments, your scale armor. On the subject of falling, because that's what you do when you finish levitating, I know it's a weak segue, just leave me be, I like the idea of slime boots that reduce fall damage. These would be crafted with leather boots and two slime, simple as that. About slimes. What if we have a random chance spawn of giant slimes in plains biomes? These could be up to 4x4 four four blocks and they would do a lot of damage, but maybe when they break up they go into 4 or 5 medium sized slimes and they drop a slime block. So they'll be rare, but rewarding if you could kill them, especially since I could see them doing 3 or 4 hearts of damage, and maybe giving you some sort of slowness or sticky effect? A sticky effect seems a cool thing, where for a short time you'd move slower and not be able to jump. Or maybe you jump and then bounce when you jump, because you're sticky. Who knows? Okay, I have one last piece of armor to add, and I'm not too sure how to implement it. The idea is that kinetic energy from Elytra doesn't count if you're wearing a helmet you can craft from a bird mold, but the only choices at the moment are feathers from parrots and chickens, which doesn't seem powerful enough for this. Instead, you could take them from the Terror of the Night Skies, which is a mod that will be coming soon to Minecraft. It would be cool to have a helmet to get rid of kinetic energy from flying. Just an idea. If you like the idea, remember to give me a like down below. Yet another hostile mob that I'd like to see spawn is the Scorpion mob. It seems such an obvious thing for Minecraft, and would spawn in deserts fairly infrequently, but it would spawn during the day as well as the night, and attack any passing players. Like a spider, you could also have a poisonous variant. I just think some more mobs would be good to see in the game. As always, when I talk about more mobs, I must mention adventurous skeletons and minor zombies, to be found in the dungeons I mentioned earlier, as well as abandoned mines and abandoned mine shafts. You could also have giant slimes in these dungeons occasionally, and scorpions and spiders, just a lot of cool things. I also think it would be cool if there are a few new bosses in these dungeons. You could have a giant spider boss that drops some nice loot, like potions of poison. Maybe not one in every dungeon, but if the dungeons were fairly common, it would be an interesting mini-boss, like an elder guardian. Another boss I can think of is the block boss. This would appear to be a big bunch of stone bricks, but would behave like a shulker. So, the middle blocks of each 3x3 three three section would pop open and fire a shulker bomb at the player, but without the levitation effect. If you wanted to make these difficult, you could make it so the player could only harm the boss by hitting the holes these projectiles come from. I'm not sure what this boss could drop, but it sounds difficult to beat, so definitely some good loot. Possibly gold or diamonds? Maybe when you kill it, it does just turn into a 3x3 three three block of stone bricks with a chest in the middle, and the chest could have some sort of that shulker armor mentioned earlier. Some diamonds, gold, some enchanted books, maybe a few treasure maps. I would like to leave you with one last enchantment, which is the quick hand enchantment. That increases attack speed so you can attack faster with your different weapons. It would also affect bow draw speed, so you could fire arrows faster with this. Anyway, that is all my ideas for this month. It's really long, so thank you for sticking all the way through, and please do like the video if you enjoyed it, or thought any of the ideas were good. And if you think they should be in the game, please share it with all your wonderful friends and on your social media, so that Mojang can see it and take some more of my ideas, because they've clearly watched my videos and taken them. Yes, definitely. If you have any of your own ideas, please do leave them in the comments, because I love reading them. And if you don't want to miss next month, which is miscellaneous, so any kind of idea, or any of my other videos for that matter, then please do subscribe. But thank you so, so much for watching. Playlist at the side if you want to catch up on the other Minecraft update ideas as we head into the end of the series. Anyway, thank you again, and ciao. Damn. A whole seven pages. This is going to take years to edit.